uh, EP in 2007 with uh, Neil Murray of Whiteside Office before you joined. And the way that came about was just uh, we were sitting in a bar, we need the bass player, and uh, who, who should we get? You know, like, and um, in, immediately you start thinking about well, what's the great players in the world, you know? And uh, it's like Neil Murray's great, you know? Just, I just So we basically just asked him, do you want to uh, record with us? And he said, uh, yeah, we'll do it on two conditions. Number one, you're not crap. And uh, number two, I think it was if if you had to take a day off from uh, uh, playing at uh, We Will Rock You, uh, the musical in London, he had to get the stand-in and pay the stand-in money. So he says, well, if I have to do that, I'll, you know, you have to pay that guy some money. Oh, can I just say, asking one of your heroes to play um, Neil Murray on, on a record, uh, you need a certain amount of balls to do that. I mean, obviously you felt like you were good enough to ask him, because that was one of the stipulations, you know, you can't be shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not going to do it if I just want to put his name to something. So, uh, what, what gave you that swagger? If you're going to pay an expensive studio, you need to have a bass guitarist uh, with us who already play very tight, that come in, can come in and do the stuff very quickly. So I already had in my mind that I need somebody who's good enough to pick up these quick songs and do it like that, you know? And sure enough, Neil Murray just walks, walks in. I think the first song we did was Salty Salty, which is a Nazareth cover. And uh, I think Neil Murray had like one uh, overdub on that, which is like a, at the very end when he has like a really, really fast. And then it's like, oh, I missed the note there, so I'll do that again. But all the rest of that, he was spot on. So it's like, wow. So that was amazing. Yeah. Well, in general, if something is reasonably simple, I've probably heard the same chord sequences thousands of times. Um, I mean, to be honest, well, it, it, it varies. It, if something is very easy, then I just play along with you. I might be yeah. watching your, yeah. where your hands are moving on the guitar, just following the, following the chords. If there was some particular riff that required me to practice it to be sure of, then maybe I'd do that beforehand. Maybe, I, I mean, I often write things out in a very simple way. If it requires me to make lots of notes and whatever just to get through it, mm. then that's what I'll do rather yeah. than sit and sit and learn and learn and learn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more yeah. these days what I would do is to listen to songs over a period of days, let's say, until they become infiltrated into my mind and not so I don't, don't have to think about them very much I know what's coming next but mm. then again I've been in situations where you just hear something for the first time and you've got to play along and I pick up things pretty quickly <laughs> Hey John, 
first album did, did pretty well. You, you won some awards and you got quite a bit of coverage. Do you want to just quickly talk about how how that came about? Or Yeah, I mean, we were extremely pleased with the last album because uh, we got like a very good distribution company, Cargo Records, and they, they managed to plaster our record all over the shop. But we, we also got uh, Classic Rock when they heard uh, the single, they wanted to put it out as a single. So, so we, our single went out to all the Classic Rock readership and that's 60,000 you know, CDs being sent out with our music on it. So suddenly we had like, you know, radio stations in Russia, in Israel, and you know, Everyone America. Uh, yeah. And so, so this is like, yeah, I, w I would never have dreamt about that, you know. Hell, you know, I was, was a friend of mine and we sort of, you know, met online and uh, he was a big fan and all that. And he, he wrote to me one day and he said he was going to do an album, would I like to guest on it? I was Sure, where? When? <laughs> and he said, Sony Studio, I said, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm coming over to do some tracks at Sony Studios in Memphis, and I thought, I've got to be there. <laughs> you know, I've got to record the Elvis and Carl Perkins and Jenny Lee Lewis were all my heroes, you know. First generation rock, all the best records came out of Sun. Johnny Cash, for God's sake, Roy Orbison, I mean, the list's endless. Fantastic music, and they were a great studio, you know. Hell, you had these these songs, and they were they were pretty sort of really really good, and and um, we had some good good players, you know. It was certainly a step up in terms of professionalism, in terms of the musicians and the engineer and, and the, the whole situation. It was slightly artificial in that you know you're there in a almost in a museum in a way, um, and. You know, there's no way that you're going to record in the way that people did in the 50s, even if you're in the same room. I went in there and I was disappointed that they had Pro Tools. That was my biggest disappointment, that they had uh, come into a Pro Tools studio. But the room sounded good, and uh, the equipment was, was there, you know, and the, all the big pictures of Carl Perkins and Elvis, and great, great place. It was a completely unusual situation and enjoyable to be doing something like that. It was a good experience and I think Helge was, was happy with the, the end result, you know, and I took some of the stuff back to my, my house in, in Scotland and did a couple of extra guitar parts and, and, and mixed a couple of things there and it turned out real good.